So gravity is one of the weirdest and most neglected moves in Pokemon. For five turns, it takes away all ground immunities, stops air-based moves like fly or high jump kick, increases accuracy by 1.67 times, but most importantly, it helps out this guy. Flapple has the exclusive move Grav Apple, which is a grass type move with 80 power and always drops the opponent's defense. However, when gravity is up, this move's power is boosted by 50% to a strong 120. Flapple also has the ability Hustle, which boosts its attack stat by 50% at the cost of its attacks being 20% less accurate. We can use Prankster Meowstic to set up the gravity immediately, and then its eject button switches it out right into Flapple. With gravity up, Flapple gets the boost on Grab Apple paired with the Hustle boost and not having to worry about the accuracy loss, which makes it kinda strong. We can also run Endure to live in attack at 1 HP, pop a Salic Berry to boost our speed, and then go ahead and bop some stuff with boosted acrobatics. Gravity Flapple is absolute nonsense, but we're gonna make this bad boy work. So you know what they say, an apple a day, Keeps, uh, keeps the overused nonsense away. I don't know, no one's ever said it, but today, that is what we are talking about. Flapple does not get enough love, and neither does Gravity, because it's nonsense. But that's what I'm all about. Now, if you're into that kind of thing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400K, and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Meowstic, and I just have a floppy hands little fella here. So this actually is a great matchup for me, Mostly just because this thing is allergic as hell to U-turn, and it actually just ends up knocking this thing out, does not expect the Choice Scarf. I am in fact faster, and I just pull a little skirt, and that takes care of it. And also now, I get myself a little switch into whatever I want. Now, killing something with U-turn, at least they can see what I switch into, and then decide to match up. But I'm like, you know what? It's time. There's never a better time. I'm just going to go into the Meow Stick right now and see if we can get some Apple shenanigans going. So, they decide to bring in the Lurantis. But he's got the striped pants on, ready for the damn disco. And I am going to make the gravity all crazy in here. It shrinks us down into pancakes, and the gravity is going to intensify. So, they actually end up going for the pollen puff here, which is fine. I was really just hoping mostly that they attack me, because that then activates the eject button. I'm going to go ahead and switch on out of here, which now allows me to try to take advantage of gravity turns for as long as possible. So... I'm gonna go right into young Johnny Appleseed. The Flapple comes in looking absolutely menacing, fighting for my life to stay in the air with these little apple wings. And while I don't have the greatest coverage, I'm just gonna go for the grab apple anyway. The reason is I know it's gonna be an easy two hit KO. And also, I know that I can take at least one attack from this thing. So they then go for that pollen puff. It's a super effective hit, but I'm able to take it and I'm actually faster to just drop another apple on his head. And that's... He's gonna take care of the bug, and the deadly apple is just already making stuff work even through not very effective hits. So, now they can decide to switch into whatever they like, and in comes the Gardevoir. This thing is gonna trace my hustle, which honestly just doesn't benefit it at all, and we do actually have two turns of the gravity left. So, here's the plan. I know this thing is gonna be faster, and will be able to knock me out with a fairy hit. I'm gonna go for the Endure, and be like, just gonna hang on for dear life over here, as the Moonblast does, of course, knock us down to 1 HP, which now is going to activate our little Salic Berry after a little special attack drop that obviously doesn't matter. So, we bust out a berry that is literally bigger than ourselves, and now our speed is looking like it's to the point that as long as this thing isn't Scarf, I can outspeed, and a Grab Apple guaranteed to hit with that hustle with the increased damage is just a straight up knockout on the Gardevoir. So, the gravity does return to normal, which is annoying, but listen, Flapple is chilling over here with higher speed than everything, and still hits pretty hard. So as they go into the Hatterene, I go for the acrobatics, and of course, I miss, because Hustle is literally gotta be one of my least favorite abilities in the game. <laughs> the first turn gravity's gone, I already suffer the, the bullshit that comes with the Hustle ability. Would have been very satisfying to get that acrobatics off, because I just used up the item, I had the speed, and Flapple was gonna go crazy. However, now I just have to deal with this Hatterene the old-fashioned way, and so I decide to send in my freaking Zebra. So. I know that I can take attacks from this thing, and honestly, Zeb Striker looks kind of nice in this late game if I can get some speed up. So I just decided to go for that Flame Charge. It is going to do a little bit of chip there, but more importantly, give us that speed boost. Uh, and then the Psychic is actually going to whittle us quite a bit here. So 
I'm mostly now just hoping that Supercell Slam is going to be enough to kill the fella. I do actually also connect, which is also a freaking miracle, being able to land Supercell Slams. It also kind of works a synergy on this team, having the gravity. If somehow Zeb Striker comes in, then I'm like, I don't have to worry about missing Supercells, but it is what it is. So Hatterene goes down, and now they decide to go into the Milotic. Now I'm looking at this thing thinking, they only have two Mons left, and if they're going to Terra, it's probably going to be this thing, but they actually just do not. And they maybe just assume that they can live in attack from Zeb Strike. It turns out to also be cute charm, so as I do knock it out, I fall in love with it, and then it dies, so it's like some crazy love story over here. So Zeb Strike is just confused and just straight up conflicted out here. However, their final Pokemon is going to be uh, a Glaceon here. So little boot wearing fella is now going to have to worry about taking an overheat, except I freaking missed that too. So I don't know what. The, what the hell happened with my gravity, but it just seemed to have re reversed the effects as soon as it wears off. And now I just died to a freeze dry, but the good news is all that being left is the Glaceon. I do, of course, still have the Mian Chao. I can just bring this floppy fool in and hopefully just beat the devil out of him like he's the damn Bob Ross paintbrush. So, obviously the close combat here is kind of just the play, and I do still have some considerable stuff in the back. They do not go for the Terra. I punch him, and that is going to take care of it. So, that is going to be it, the end of that game. Honestly, kind of just a ridiculous match, but Flapple did get to do some gravity shenanigans, and that is always fun. So, that is going to bring us now into game number two. So listen, here's the thing. This grab apple gravity shenanigans is very ridiculous. It, it, honestly, it's not good, but it is kind of fun, but it's really hard to pull off. So listen, if you're enjoying, go ahead and hit that like button for your boy. It really does help out the channel. And with that, let's jump into game number two. So this time, my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Snatched King, the friggin' Grimmsnarl. And I'm like, wow, I've never seen a Grimmsnarl lead before. That is, he's crazy. I don't, I have no idea what this thing's going to do. I decided to lead off with the Mian Shao just because I want to get a nice little pivot. I'm going to go for the U-turn, as of course, the Grimmsnarl is going to go for that Reflect. And uh, it is just going to be pretty much guaranteed to be a light clay, dual screens, and like a parting shot. Just, you know the general, the gist of the thing. So the problem with this Grim Snarl, it's just completely going to dampen the already kind of non-existent offense I have. So I decided to just go into the Blissey here. Now I am working with the Woody. She's a white girl with the booty. And I'm here to basically just be annoying. I, I don't generally <laughs> use Blisseys, but I figured it'd be kind of fun to mess around with. Because as I come in here, they're going to set up the dual screen. I can take this opportunity to just set up the Stealth Rock. And the good thing about this matchup is the Grimstar can't really do that much to me. I am bold max defense, but obviously have a, enough special defense to stay alive forever. And they're just actually going to end up going for the parting shot here as I decide just to Thunder Wave. Because if there's anything that Blissey does well, it's just be extremely annoying. And one of those ways to do that is just to be paralyzed and stuff. However, Beef E Boner has the idea to just... He knows what's coming. He's going to end up switching into Landorus here. It's probably to set up Stealth Rock of their own, but also now the Thunder Wave does not work. And Blissey is now staring at a physical attacker. And I'm thinking, hmm, I don't really have the greatest switch-ins to this. Really kind of at all. But what I can do is go for Seismic Tosses. One of the things I really want to try to do is kind of eliminate those uh, screens on their side. And we're just going to try to waste some turns here. So as they set up the Stealth Rock, I'm just going to go for the Seismic Toss. And sometimes you just got to turn the guy into the damn earth and then throw him down. That's exactly what we're going to do. As now they're going to try to get some chip on the Blissey. Our Earthquake does a round half, but I'm like, no, no, no. You, sir, are the earth. And I throw him down once again. So after some leftovers, uh, Blissey is kind of fine to stay in here and go for another seismic toss. As I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I really don't want anything else to take, you know, Earthquake damage. So they actually end up going for the U-turn. Likely expect the switch here, which is kind of fine because now they have to decide to bring in whatever and they decide to go into the Rotom. So Rotom Heat, the old Easy Bake Oven, does come in, take some Stealth Rock, and then pair that with the Seismic Toss. It's actually well below half now. I'm like, hey, this is actually kind of super fine. Once again, I'm bypassing both the screens and also at the same time just uh, watching the world burn because I'm using Blissey. So I decide obviously this thing can't really hurt me. I, I kind of figure if anything, they're probably going to go for a trick. And that's exactly what they do. At this point, I am not soft-boiled on this Blissey because I have a little bit of humanity left in me. Uh, but also, yeah, I'm like, this is fine. I can take the Choice Scarf from the trick, and a, another Seismic Toss is actually enough to kill the Rotom. Literally, two Seismic Tosses knock out the Rotom, which is actually kind of amazing. Because that thing would have been a little bit annoying for the Flapple in the back, and we're feeling pretty good. So, in comes the Don Bozo, friggin' Pearl 
from SpongeBob is out here just clomping around and this thing is freaking massive. Once again, I'm feeling like I'm just kind of just gonna let Blissey go down here. I go for the seismic toss because it is some nice little chip there. We do take some Rocky Helmet and an avalanche is actually gonna knock me out. So most of the time I'm like, okay Blissey, your, your time is up. That's kind of what I needed there in this situation because I really am mostly trying to now get in the Meowstic for free. I can't hard switch into Meowstic because that then activates that we, that uh, where you get eject button. And sometimes we don't want we don't want to prematurely eject, which happens. But I bring in Hocus Pocus and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go for the gravity here. I'm kind of hoping that they go for an attack, um, but uh, I get that gravity to intensify as they actually just end up going for the rest. But he is sleepy as hell and just rests with like 25% HP gone, which is fine, but the rest on Dozo kind of tells me this is probably going to be a sleep talk set. However, both of the screens are now gone, and as this thing is sleeping, it's not going to have that Chester Berry because we, of course, saw the uh, the Rocky Helmet. So I'm just going to take this opportunity to switch right into the freaking Apple. We are wasting no time here other than, you know, all the time wasted with Blissey. But I bring in Johnny, and they do actually end up uh, going for the sleep talk here. Now, Problem with Sleep Talk is we saw that they did have Avalanche in the moveset. So if they get Avalanche, I'm actually shit out of luck. But luckily, the Sleep Talk gods do give us Earthquake. So we take that no problem. And guess what time it is? It is apple dropping time. Boys, imagine just being sleeping and then all of a sudden a massive apple with intense gravity lands on your head and now you're dead. But he just died in his sleep and Don Dozo getting knocked out by an apple is actually pretty damn sweet. So that is really fun. As now they decide to go back into the Grim Snarl and I'm thinking, damn it, the uh, screens have reset. I can still at least just go for a grab apple here and have some fun, but they actually end up going for the light screen. They probably don't really see the Flapple as a threat. They're probably going for light screen, I imagine, just because uh, thinking about threats in the back. I have no idea, but grab apple just knocks out that dude as well and Flapple's gonna take anything he can get. That is for damn sure. So. Landorus can come in, it does take some Stealth Rock, but also has that Intimidate, which, you know, is annoying. But Flapple is not afraid here. I can now, obviously knowing that they're most likely going to be able to have something to knock me out, I'm going to go for the Endure here, and I need to be able to outspeed this to try to at least get some ship here. So, uh, they actually end up going for the Outrage, which is going to be a super effective hit, which is kind of nice because it knocks us down to one. And also, we know that this thing is just going to be locked into that Outrage, at least for another turn. So... That is going to activate the Salic Berry here. Gravity does return to normal, which is very bad news if you're a Flapple, because I am out here hustling, and now I'm just going to go for an Acrobatics. It will be able to finish off the Landorus, which is great, except for the fact that Gravity is not up, and now that allows me to miss. It hustle, once again, has been absolutely busting my balls and my apples out here. So that does finish off the Flapple. But we got some nice little, some, some apple stuff going and all the doctors are afraid they're going to have to stay away. So, uh, Landorus is kind of a sitting duck here at this point to bring in whatever I like. And I'm thinking, you know what, I'm going to go into uh, the boy Zapadash. I've actually been having a lot of fun with the uh, with the Zeb Striker lately. And even though they have the light screen up, looking at this matchup, I'm thinking I probably should just go for an overheat to kill. Hindsight, I probably actually should have just gone for the flame charge, but overheat is going to connect, does kill the Landorus. And uh, that is great because now, honestly, Zeb Striker once again kind of looks nice. It's this is a weird, very weird Pokemon, but it looks cool as hell. I like when his stripes go yellow, and it makes me want that friggin' zebra bubble gum that someone in the comments is gonna remember. So now they're gonna end up going into the Blaziken. Young Ken from the Barbie movie comes in. They have two Pokemon left. It's gonna be the Blaziken along with the Metagross in the back. So problem with Blaziken is that the Protect is gonna that now give it a speed boost. As, of course, my high horsepower is not going to work out here. I swear, nobody expects the high horsepower coming from the Zebra. Maybe because he's not a horse, but he's got some horsepower out here. So, that now gives it the speed boost, sitting at plus one speed. I do figure the Mian Shao in the back is kind of a win condition at this point. But I go for another high horsepower, and I actually outspeed. So, Jolly Zeb Strika outspeeds a Blaziken with plus one, as long as it has less than 180 EVs in speed. Which, sometimes, people don't run max speed on the thing, especially if it's adamant. So... Honestly, kind of surprising to outspeed there, but down goes the Blaziken, and now Final Mon is going to be the Metagross. So, Metagross, looking like a damn Xbox, does come in, and I obviously have the coverage with uh, both Flame Charge and High Horsepower. My special attack is fucked at this point, so I just go right for that High Horsepower. But they are going to end up actually committing the Terra here, and uh, the late game Terra is actually kind of scary. I'm like, is this Metagross about to pull the game back? It is going to be Terra Water, so it actually 
Would have been hilarious had I just gone for uh, the stab super cell slam. But now being a water type, high horsepower does connect. Except it does literally no damage to the thing. And even with that life orb, it is now going to finish me off with the knockoff. So down goes Zebra. Was robbed once again. And uh, it's fine. Zebra's going to have his day, I swear. I'm going to make it happen. So I do at least still have some threats left. I'm just going to go into the Mian Shao at this point. I figure... I'm just looking at it, I'm like, you know, maybe a close combat actually doesn't kill here. But one thing I can do is bust out the old late game Terra, you know, of my own, which is sometimes fun. I can go for the extra fighting stab. Paired with the close combat, does not matter if you're a freaking water type. I can just go ahead and punch through the old water. So I put the fist on my Mian Shao head. Honestly, Scarf Mian Shao is such a good pivot Pokemon, just Pokemon in general. Being able to have the regenerator ability and just be super fast, you pivot around with U-turns. This thing always comes in clutch. The close combat is not quite gonna be able to finish the guy though. I don't know what the hell this freaking Metagross is working with. It seems like it's more defensive. So it's actually able to live and then the Psychic Fangs kills me. So I'm like, holy hell, I have found myself in a spot against this Metagross where it's actually turning into a way closer game <laughs> than I thought this was gonna be. Uh, so Psychic Fangs kills me. The light screen does wear off on their end. And the good thing is I do at least have one guy left that is, has a hard time dying. And that is going to be the boy Probopass. Ned Flanders comes in. Mustache looking extra bushy and gold. I mean, the mustache is not. We are gold. However, I know that I should be able to uh, <laughs> hopefully kill the fella with a body press. And uh, it does actually outspeed. Hammer arm for the coverage. We are barely able to live, which is honestly crazy. This Metagross nearly did it. I mean, I still had at least had Meowstic to kill it with a Psychic, but... All I gotta do is press my mustache on him, and that is gonna be a dead Metagross, and that's gonna be the end of the game. So, once again, still just a ridiculous match, but it always is when you're messing around with just weird stuff. So, that is gonna be the end of that one, and I do have one more bonus match for the squad, because this is fun. So, this time we're going up against quite the scary looking team. I've got some kind of just weird threats over there, and in general, so do I. So, you already know this is gonna turn out to be a good one. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So this time, we are working with a little Rock Doggo lead. And Lycan Rock is probably just here to do some Stealth Rocks and Excel Rock and just do, you know, his general stuff. So, Frostitude is out here. Basically, I have the ability to get some chip here, but then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go for some spikes. Uh, the hazard control on their side doesn't look super reliable. Actually, I don't even think they have any. But also, the chip is just going to be really nice to try to make Flapple's job at least a little easier. If I can freaking land attacks when gravity goes away. So... They set up the Stealth Rock like we imagine, and I'm just going to go for a second layer of Spikes here. I found the weakness in their squad in that they don't have really any way to get rid of them, so we're just going to make sure all these Legos are going to absolutely ruin all the bare feet that come in and step on them. So, second layer of Spikes up, and as the Accelerock comes in, I obviously cannot take another one, but what I can do is bring in the Mian Shao, who obviously does not care about the Rock Attacks, and then puts a lot of pressure on the Lycanroc. Now, they do end up uh, going for an Accelerock here, which is fine. I take it, no problem. And as I'm looking at it, they probably, even though they are most likely going to be like a Focus Sash, they don't really have much to hit me with in return. So I can expect them to make a nice little defensive pivot here, and then I can kind of counteract that with a U-turn. So they do switch out, and we are going to be able to U-turn on whatever they bring in. Turns out to be the friggin' Squawkabilly. Young Bird Elvis comes in, and he gets his ass U-turned on. So that is perfect, because now... I can decide to bring in whatever I want against the Burb. And as I'm looking at it, I'm like, you know, I'm just going to go right back into Frostitude. Not only do I scare this thing with an Ice Beam, so I probably more than likely you know, force another switch here. Uh, but also, I can try to get some Destiny Bond stuff going because Frostlast just does that kind of thing. So, this thing is going to activate that Flame Orb to get its Guts ability, I assume. And I go for the Spikes kind of expecting a switch here. So... That is going to set up the third layer of spikes, and now I feel bad for all the bare feet over there. So, it actually ends up going for the copycat, which is kind of lit. does allow it to now go for the spikes, and I'm like, well, damn. Now I got now there's just so many spikes around, it's going to be it's gonna be a wild time. So, copycat is actually such a fun move that uh, a lot of the time you don't expect. But, uh, at this point, I'm now going to go for the Destiny Bond. I'm like, surely this thing wants to attack here, and while I do have the potential for an Ice Beam... I'm like, you know what, Frostitude's not going to be switching back in anytime soon. So I just let the Destiny Bond do its thing as it does attack me, but then I actually also get the Cursed Body. So then I'm like, hey, you can't do that ever again. And then also, you're dead. So you will not only be not doing that, but extra not doing it because you're dead as hell. So down goes the Squawk ability. Now we got ourselves a good old 
Get a little empty battle standoff. So we can both decide to switch in whatever we like. And I'm feeling like this is a pretty decent opportunity for me to try to get Meowth to go in for some gravity. So Hocus Pocus is going to come in and uh, we get to see what they want to go into. So the problem with Meowth Stick, at least with this eject button and gravity, is that you really need to capitalize on all of the turns. And one way that ensure that is to make sure that they attack us here. So as the Lycanroc comes in, it does get its potential sash broken. I go for the gravity because I am prankster. It does allow me to outspeed as they do not click the Accelerock here. And actually is going to go for the crunch. So that is going to do a bunch of damage. I do actually end up living. However, that is going to go ahead and crunch my little button. Presses that eject button and we are out of here. And guess what? It is apple time. Now, Flatbull has a pretty decent matchup switching in here. I don't imagine they have much to really hit me with. And we're coming in looking nice and green. We're just a wormy little guy inside of an apple. And the spikes plus the stealth rock is going to do its thing. But... This thing is going to be faster than me, which is unfortunate. However, I think I can take at least one attack from it. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop the damn apple from the tree. And sometimes you just got to try to take advantage of the gravity turn. So they actually end up switching out here, which is fine. They're going to end up switching into the ice boy, the big old whale. Um, the freaking Satitan. I was like, wanted to call him Satotl. That's Satitan. And guess what? He's freaking sedead now because the apple is way too damn powerful. Probably thought that maybe he could switch in and live an attack. And then threaten me with like a priority like ice shard or something like that. But that is just going to absolutely delete the whale. And that feels pretty good. So the problem with Flapple in this matchup is this freaking guy. The staple remover, aka the bridge guy, is kind of a, a bit of a problem here. Because, as of course I know they probably have the dragon coverage versus me. I'm like, I'm going to end up going for the steel terra here. That's going to at least allow me to take an attack from this. And I kind of just want to see how much a grab apple with hustle, with gravity is gonna do to a very defensive fella. And the answer is not much. It <laughs> doesn't really do anything, but what it does do is at least gives it a defense drop, so it kind of negates the stamina there. And uh, it actually ends up activating this thing's freaking red card. And um, yeah, it was kind of a dumb idea going for the grab apple there. But I mostly just knew that I could take an attack as long as it wasn't gonna body press, which I was pretty sure it wasn't. So it ends up dragging out the Meowstic here which is a bit unfortunate. I do actually live the hazard, but then just die to a breaking swipe, as uh, that's yeah, fine. I mean, Meowstic kind of used up at this point. It actually would have been kind of nice to get some prankster screens up, but it is what it is, and now at least I have a free, or at least safe swap into whatever I like here. So I'm gonna go Mian Shao because it's kind of obviously just my easiest answer uh, to the bridge. Good thing is I've got some considerable chip on the guy, plus if it wants to switch back in, it's going to have to take way more chip from the spikes also. So I'm just going to go for the close combat here. As I'm going to end up committing the Terra. I'm like, please do not be a ghost Terra. Because honestly, I really do need this Mian Chao. It turned out to be the Dragon Terra. Which is now going to uh, allow close combat to not do as much as it once would have. And this thing is looking quite menacing with a freaking dragon on its head. So I beat the hell out of him. And it actually ends up living. Surprisingly, it does live with just a little sliver of health. And that is going to give me the defensive drop. And also give this thing just a little bit more, you know, some stamina. So now another breaking swipe is looking like it's not good for our floppy friend over here. That does actually knock us down to 1 HP, which is kind of crazy. I truly did not expect. I lived it with literally 1, which is always just like, freaking, he, he powered through due to the power of friendship or whatever the hell <laughs> they say in the games. So one more close combat is going to finish off uh, the bridge, and that is actually pretty damn good. Now at least... I am kind of stuck in here with the Mian Chao because obviously I can't come back in on the Stealth Rock. But the bridge going down along with the Terra is always pretty damn solid. So we're able to uh, finish that thing off. The gravity does return to normal, which does suck for our Flapple in the back there. But maybe we could get the Flapple to still do some stuff even without the gravity, which is going to be a damn task. But I am quite determined. So in comes the Lycanroc. And at this point, obviously, it's going to be able to uh, Accelerock and knock me out. But then as I'm looking at it, I'm like, hold on a second. I can actually swap out here, mostly just because of the fact that I get Regenerator. And re the amount of health that I regenerate should be enough to allow me to switch back in for free one more time, as they're just going to obviously go for that Accelerock. And Woody is so damn thick out here, looking like a bowl of oatmeal. We're able to take that nicely. So Here's the thing, Lycanroc has the opportunity to have close combat, and I kind of just come into Blissey here as just like a sack switch. I want to go for a healing wish, as they actually go for the Stone Edge, which does get a critical hit, and I live with 13 HP, which is hilarious, which now allows me to just go ahead and off myself with a healing wish. So, 
that is kind of nice. And as I'm looking at this, I'm like, you know what? The main option would be to go into Mian Chao. But this is, today's about freaking Flapple. <laughs> the Healing Wish is going to be a little bit helpful. I go into the Flapple here, and I kind of thought that the Hazards would hit me and then the Healing Wish. But it turns out I come in, I get the Healing Wish first, um, and then the Hazards are going to come into play. So that was kind of a, a little bit of order of operations that I wasn't thinking about. But it's not that big of a deal because I have a bunch of health. Now, if they didn't close combat on the Blissey, that means this thing likely does not have close combat. So... I'm kind of free to go for a grab apple here. I know that I can take any attack uh, the Lycan Rock wants to throw at me, and they don't really have much that wants to switch in here. So, as I go for the grab apple, I have no gravity up, mind you. They're actually going to end up switching into the Crawdon. Most likely, this is going to be a sack switch in. So, this thing comes in, takes some spikes, and grab apple is going to miss. Literally, I have not hit a single move with Hustle without gravity being up today. And that is absolutely breaking my balls out here. I go for another one, and I miss that one too. Literally, what the hell is Hustle doing here? They now can just go for the Crab Hammer. And actually, I end up barely living, which now is going to activate my Salic Berry. But as I'm looking at this, I'm like, well, it surely is just going to now Aqua Jet. It doesn't look like that was banded damage, but... Uh, or no, we saw the Life Orb, right? I can go for a Grab Apple. They actually do not Aqua Jet. Maybe Buddy's not working with the priority there or something, but Grab Apple finally connects and kills the guy, and I'm like, Jesus. It takes three tries to land one Grab Apple with <laughs> without the gravity, which is so annoying. So, two Pokemon left. Obviously, the Lycanroc can now come in pretty freely as they just have that priority with the Acceleroc, but Flapple was able to grab one little cheeky last KO there, which uh, is satisfying. Once again, this thing is absolute ass. Do I recommend definitely not doing this if you're looking to actually do good but it is fun and so that's what we're all about so it is now a 2-2 match which is quite close and as i'm looking at it honestly the zeb strike is kind of my best bet here i can go into this thing and i should be able to um, outspeed this thing barring obviously an Acceleroc, and i can just go for a high horsepower to finish it off so it is going to go for that Acceleroc here knocks me down just a bit does leave us enough for the life orb to not just knock us out we put a little horseshoe on Buddy's face, and that is going to take care of the Lycanroc. So, Zebra is out here in ready looking yellow, as they do have one Pokemon left. So their final Pokemon is actually going to be the, uh, the Scovillain, which is not quite as threatening as long as it's not on a Sun Team. And Buddy comes out here, I know that I can outspeed here, and I kind of just, my best bet is to just go for a high horsepower. Overheat is there just to kind of stir things up against more physically defensive mons, but I go for the high horsepower just to guarantee that at least I can get some chip, but it actually just ends up knocking out the fella because Scovillain is a damn glorified middle stage evolution. So that is going to be the end of the game, and pretty much all the matches today were ridiculous, but also I was using an apple, so it is what it is. Thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate each and every one of you, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.